Welcome to the Vivo Nex 3. We're talking about a device that hasn't even been released yet. I was just handed this massive black box, which contained a cryptic message and this smartphone. So today, there are four things I want to show you. A display, unlike any smartphone you've ever seen before. A camera test in some of London's most iconic locations. Then a speed comparison versus last gen devices. And finally, to take an infinity pool photo to showcase this new form factor. You'll see what I mean in a few minutes. So the first thing you're gonna notice here is screen. This thing is almost all display. Now I can't reveal size and specifications, but you can probably tell for yourself this is a massive phone with massive curves. So much so that even when you turn the phone on its side, half of what you're seeing is still display. And compared to other curved display phones, the Vivo Nex 3 on the right spills about four to five times as much onto the sides. Plus, one thing that's a little different here is that the body is completely seamless. No physical buttons at all. You've actually got haptic feedback on the body of the phone and it works surprisingly well. On the right hand side, you've got a slight grippy area, which is your virtual power button. And then you can use this to feel for the volume keys, which are above and below it. It genuinely feels almost exactly like having physical buttons. On the top, you've got a headphone jack as well. You've got a camera pop-out, which I'll come to in a second, and also a secondary power button for when one isn't enough. And right next to that, a microphone, which combines with another microphone on the bottom of the phone just to pick up clearer audio. You've also got a single speaker next to that. And off we went. There were six photos I wanted to capture in very specific parts of London. The first one being Covent Garden, which is famous for just being this massive entertainment shopping kind of area. Anyways, I got my photo and the idea of this challenge is primarily to showcase the display, to show that it's so borderless that it almost blends into the world around it. The next stop was Shoreditch, the place of creatives and trendsetters, and this place is filled with graffiti. So as a way of capturing its essence, I tried taking a photo of that, and this is one of my favorites. I really like how this turned out. It's not a perfect result, and this is pretty tough to do because your phone is capturing things from a different perspective to where your eyes are seeing them from. Next stop, The Shard, which is actually the tallest building in the entire United Kingdom, and it's around this area where you get some of the best 5G signal in the country. And so this is where I'm gonna be doing the speed test, which you'll see in a minute. Just while walking between The Shard and Tower Bridge, you've got the Tower of London, which is basically a massive palace, and it's beautiful, so I decided to get one of our photos here. Now, Tower Bridge is the one I'd imagine almost all of you will have either visited or seen or at least heard about. This is one of the most famous spots in the entire country. Whilst I was here, I actually managed to take two photos because from Tower Bridge, you can pretty much see the entire London skyline and I couldn't walk past that opportunity. Right, so now that we were in this area and we were getting strong 5G signal in some spots of it, it was a good time to do a 5G speed test. But just before I jump into that, a few things worth noting. The phone has a glass back and a completely new camera system, which I can't say too much about, but it's different and it's exciting. So the first speed test was the obvious one. I literally pulled up the speed test application and compared a 4G smartphone on the left hand side and a Vivo Nex 3 on the right running 5G. And the difference is literally 10 times in terms of download speeds. The app then automatically switches to testing upload speeds. And whilst I was getting around about 10 megabits per second on my S10, I was getting closer to 30 on the Vivo Nex 3, reliably at about 25. So you don't need to be told that there is a massive jump in potential bandwidth here, but to test it out a little bit more, I tried downloading the same application, Arc Survival Evolved, on the Vivo Nex 3 as well as a 4G device. It had downloaded about a gigabyte whilst the other phone was around about 200 megabytes and the Nex 3 had completely finished the download by the time the other phone was on about 20%. So roughly speaking, in my test, I got about a five times faster result. When it comes to 5G though, another really important aspect is latency or network communication delay. Providing that you're in a spot with good coverage, you'll notice that compared to 4G, things just happen instantaneously. For example, a YouTube video might start playing before the YouTube app itself has even fully loaded it up. And I'm sure you can imagine when you're watching videos on this display, the picture just sort of melts over the sides of the phone, kind of like the curved displays you're used to, but to another level. Whilst I was at it, I also had a quick crack at PUBG, just to see how that displays on this phone. And sure enough, it fills every corner of it. Another real world example of 5G testing was going through Netflix, picking a two hour film and hitting that download button. And right before you in real time, you can see that in this tiny space of time I'm doing this voiceover, it's already downloaded like 25%. 
Now for the infinity pool photo. The idea of this is that I was going to get a picture of water and load it up on this almost bezel-less display of the next three. I was then going to use another camera to capture this in a way that it looks like I'm actually sitting in one of those beautiful infinity pools, the ones that extend all the way to the edge of a building. I had to pick up an umbrella just to diffuse some of the light because it was just so harsh at this time, but I'm pretty happy with the result. It almost looks like you're actually sitting in a pool that's flowing off the edge of a building. Kind of cool. Now, the device I've been using is super pre-production, so none of the software, none of the camera quality, none of that is final and is all subject to potentially improve, but even from what I've seen, this looks like a massive refinement as well as quite an out-the-box smartphone. If you enjoyed this video, a sub would be massively appreciated, and I'm also going to leave links below as to when and where you can find out more about the next three. The launch event is very soon, and it's going to be a good one. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.